The following are the learning objectives for the overview of the skeleton. Describe bones and bone markings. Describe the two divisions of the skeleton. Describe the two types of bone tissue. Classify bones by shape. Describe the gross anatomy of long bones and describe the microscopic structure of compact bone. First, let's make sure you are clear on what comprises the skeletal system. The skeletal system, of course, includes bones. Those bones fit together or are joined at joints or articulations. Articulations allow for movement and they connect one bone to another. Ligaments are these fibrous structures that attach one bone to another bone at a joint. Not to be confused with tendons which attach muscles to bone, although the structures are very similar. And lastly, cartilage is also a part of the skeletal system. Cartilage is often associated with joints, such as the joints between the ribs and the sternum. The skeletal system is divided into two divisions, the axial and the appendicular. The axial skeleton includes the bones of the long axis and they're shown in this figure from your book in green. They include the bones of the skull, the vertebral column, and the bony thorax. That would be your thoracic cage and technically the thoracic vertebrae. We'll be studying the axial skeleton next week. The appendicular skeleton includes the bones of the appendages and the girdles that attach those appendages to the body trunk. So the pectoral girdle, which includes the scapula and clavicle, or what you know as your shoulder blade and uh, collarbone, and then the bones of the upper appendage. And then you have the pelvic girdle, which attaches the bones of the lower appendage to the body trunk. We will be focusing on the anatomy of the skeletal system. However, since anatomy and physiology are related, if you at least keep in the back of your mind what its functions are, you will see that reflected in the anatomy. So briefly, the functions of the skeletal system include support. The bones are able to bear weight. They bear the weight of the body, specifically the bones of the lower appendages support the weight of the upper body like pillars. Bones protect soft organs, your entire central nervous system, brain and spinal cord are surrounded by bone, a good portion of your thoracic cavity which house your lungs and heart, very important organs, are surrounded by and protected by bone. Movement, your skeletal muscles move your bones like levers and allow for locomotion. Storage, 99% of the calcium and a good percentage of the phosphorus in your body is stored on the bones of your skeletal system, as are other minerals. Also, fat is stored in certain bones of the skeletal system. And lastly, red bone marrow is the site of red and white blood cell formation. That process is called hematopoiesis and it occurs in the red bone marrow of bone. Bones have bone features or bone markings or they're often called surface features. These are often sites of attachments where muscles attach to a bone via tendons or ligaments. Sometimes there are holes or canals where nerves and blood vessels pass through bones. 
for the two skeletal labs, you'll not only be identifying bones, but you'll also be identifying these bone markings or surface features. In fact, you're going to be identifying more surface features than you are the bones. Some of these features will be projections or processes. A process is nothing more than a projection, so don't be confused by that, um, that grow out from the bone. Typically, they are where there are tendons or ligaments that are attaching to the bone and the stress of those structures pulling on the bone causes the bone to grow in that direction. Other bone markings will be depressions or cavities where either there's it's an articulating surface where another bone is articulating with that bone or it could uh, be where there is something like a blood vessel or a nerve that passes through the bones. Now you may be wondering why are bone markings important? Why uh, do I have to identify bone markings as well as the names of bones? Well many of you are going into health care fields and a lot of these projections are going to be landmarks that you're going to use to position a patient for an x-ray, for example, or an injection site, or for those of you who are going into occupational therapy, um, they, these bone markings are where muscles attach to the bone. So for various reasons, it's important to become familiar with these bone markings. There is a table in your textbook and another one in your lab manual that lists all of the bone markings as well as descriptions of these bone markings. At this point, don't try to memorize these bone markings. You need to see them in context. And for many of these, you'll only be identifying them in context. For example, a trochanter shown here Trochanter is listed with a definition, but the only place you'll find a trochanter is on the femur. So there'll be two tr trochanters you'll have to identify. One's called the greater trochanter, one's the lesser trochanter. I'm not interested in you, you being able to uh, provide a definition for what a trochanter is, as long as you can identify it. That's true of many of these bone markings. There are a few bone markings that are much more general, like a process. A process is basically any bony projection. For those, I do want you to have a pretty good sense of their definition. And for those where I want you to know their definitions, I have listed those on your study guide. So as always, refer to your study guide. There are 206 bones in the human body and those bones are composed of two types of bone tissue spongy bone and compact bone and let me take a moment to bring something to your attention the word bone can refer to an organ or it can refer to a tissue bone the organ would be like the humerus or the femur. Bone tissue includes spongy bone and compact bone. Make sure that when you see the word bone that you're very keen to pay attention to the sentence in which it's used, particularly if it's a question on a quiz or an exam. Because it could refer to tissue or it could refer to organ. Compact bone is the type of tissue that you are, bone tissue, you're most familiar with. If you've ever looked at a bone, you looked at bone tissue. If you looked at a bone from the outside, it's this nice homogeneous, looks the same from one location to the next. It's on the outer layer of bone, the organ. So it's pretty much what you see whenever you look at a bone. If you've ever dissected a bone, you would find that deep to that layer of compact bone, you have this 
spongy looking bone tissue. You have little plates of bone and um, needle-like pieces of bone that fit together such that you've got lots of open spaces and it resembles a, a sponge. And that's why it's referred to as uh, spongy bone. We'll talk a little later about where you find spongy bone versus compact bone and the differing functions of these two bone tissues. Bones, the organ, are classified by shape. Bones that are longer than they are wide are called long bones. All of the bones of your appendages, your upper and lower limbs, with the exception of the carpal bones of your wrist and the tarsal bones of your ankle, are long bones. Short bones are cubed shape. Short bones would include the bones of your wrist or carpals, as well as the bones of your ankles or tarsals. It will also include your patella or kneecap. Flat bones are flat and curved. They are designed for protection. The bones of your skull would be flat bones. And lastly are irregular bones. Irregular bones are basically flat bones that are irregularly shaped. The vertebrae of your vertebral column are all irregular bones.